I never have anything has been stolen. And if somebody steals something, you'll have a long way to swim. <laughs> All right, no worries. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Lady Musgrave experience. My name is Hayley and I'm going to be explaining some things about Lady Musgrave Island, the trip we went on and the Great Barrier Reef in itself. We decided to go on this trip for my 27th birthday or as I like to say my 111th birthday like off of Lord of the Rings and we did this for our anniversary as well we had been together for three years this was filmed back in 2017 but with everything going on at the moment I find I have a lot of time to actually sit down and go through a lot of our travel footage and edit through it which is really really so one of the things that you might not know about about Lady Musgraves is that it's actually 14 hectares of coral cay on Australia's Great Barrier Reef. So it is a part of the Great Barrier Reef. It has about a thousand hectares of surrounding reef and the island is the second southernmost island in the Great Barrier Reef chain of islands. The island is actually named after the wife of Sir Anthony Musgrave who was a colonial governor of Queensland. And these little kids are so cute, they're trying to fight the wind. I used to do that when I was little as well. The Lady Musgrave experience that we were on actually provides a lot of tours of the island itself, which you can camp on for an extra fee if you want to, um, but it is self-sustained, so that means there's no electricity in order to survive on the island for as long as you want and it is quite secluded and it does deserve to be taken care of as well because the reef is quite delicate and so is the island's ecosystem which deserves to be nurtured and deserves to be world heritage listed and protected. So Lady Musgraves is actually referred to as Wallanjinji by local Aboriginal tribes. The name Wollongonji means beautiful reef and it was absolutely beautiful. The Lady Musgrave experience which we are going on now is situated outside of Bundaberg which is up so we had to do a little bit of a drive to get here in order to have this experience of going onto the island and going snorkeling, but it was absolutely worth it. They provided us with a really lovely breakfast, a lunch and an experience on a glass bottom boat as well. looking fish. <laughs> so what are you being Ailey? Pretty good. You excited for snorkeling? Yes I am but I'm excited for the island first. Yeah. Island vibe. So these birds on this island are called noddies because when they have their mating call they nod to each other and do a little dance and you can see that their nests are made out of leaves that fall on the ground and out of um, guano which is the bird droppings that were mined on the island. It's also really interesting because the male birds actually have to pick up the leaves and present it to the female and if she doesn't like it then she can choose another mate <laughs> So in the campsites, they've actually brought along their solar panelling 
in order to power their their camp area. Such a contrast to Bali where there's just no rubbish on this island. At all. And it's just no. so beautiful. We have six of the seven species found worldwide of marine turtles. So here on Lady Musgrove, you're most likely to see three of those species. I'm sure you got enough food there, Haley. Yeah. Just because she's going to go snorkeling amongst the prawns, she decided to get a whole bunch of them. And your dad is over here. So a lot of this coral on the reef is bleached and quite recently um, the Great Barrier Reef faced its largest bleaching pandemic yet and I know that while the world is concerned about coronavirus that this is it is something that is concerning and something that will inevitably kill the reef altogether. Uh, so everything around it will crumble as well, this whole ecosystem. The reef is quite close to the sun, as you can see, which is why a lot of this in this picture is bleached. But even when you dive down deeper, there's still a lot of it that's dead and it won't come back to life. Snorkeling under here and diving was like a prehistoric playground and otherworldly. It seemed as though it was like visiting another planet, another realm. The colours that sometimes popped up were beautiful and bold and the shapes and the way the fish swam and the turtles, it all made it seem very magical and it was beautifully tragic. protect the reef and there's a lot of civilians involved in this as well, this project, protecting the turtles, trying to regrow a lot of the parts that have been affected by global warming, but it's a never-ending battle and a battle that will inevitably be lost. So we enjoyed it while we could and we'll always remember it.
Because apparently we we're going to be otherwise booted out from the rest stop that we stayed last night. Because uh, apparently the Bundaberg Council are cracking down on people who are not in self contained vehicles. So vehicles that have a toilet. Which is stupid because there's a toilet block there. Even though there's a toilet block at the rest stop. So we thought we'd get up early anyway and, um, and head home and enjoy the day and meander home and, and hopefully come across some cool shit that we didn't stop off at on the way up here. So we'll see. We'll see, but first we have to find coffee and petrol. Thanks, <laughs> mine. And I've got to eat cheese. And what day is it today? It's our anniversary, three years. <laughs> three of the most exhausting years of my life. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, we got eaten by midges on the first night. Look at it, look at the sun. Yeah, it's eerie as. You can't see it on this phone, but it just is like a little ball. It almost looks like a moon. We one, but we are many. Wow. 